Jersey. WMBC hometown. Today we're at the Core Lab at Morristown Medical Center and I'm joined by Asha Singh, the coordinator for the Core Lab, as well as being a medical laboratory scientist and Dr. Craig Dice, who is the chair of the Department of Pathology here at Morristown Medical Center. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. So let's first talk about this lab. I mean, there is so much going on here and if I you know, to someone who doesn't know much about labs, I mean, Asha, why don't you first start out by telling us everything that's happening here. We get specimens here from all over the hospital, for inpatient, outpatient as well, and we run tests such as chemistry, hematology, coag, urinalysis, um, and then we result out the results automatically to the physician. HIV, AIDS, diabetes, and cancer are just some of the diseases being uncovered at the hands of medical laboratory scientists. The core lab, as it's called, is staffed 24 hours a day. The timeliness of results is key, and ultimately, the answers that come out of here on paper could transform an entire life. For someone who comes in with, with an infection, we can not only tell the physician what's causing the infection, we can then give them information about which drugs to use. For the baby who is, who is doing well, we can make sure we can let mom and dad know that the, ba the baby is fine and all, the, all the, the laboratory testing comes out normally. You know, a lot of what we do is to monitor how well people are in addition to, to identifying when they have problems and when they're sick there's an opportunity to really make a difference. Um, you know, most of, the, most of the information that goes to a patient's medical record that a physician relies on to make a diagnosis, to monitor treatment, to determine what the next course of treatment should be, comes from the clinical laboratory. So you, you, the technologists, medical laboratory scientists, clinical lab assistants make a difference in the lives of every patient every day. And they make a difference in the lives of the future. Morristown Medical Center has participated in breakthrough studies, including the American Cancer Society's research on what causes the deadly disease. In the past decades, researchers have discovered obesity and smoking are likely factors. Participants get their blood drawn, and it can be frozen in the lab's freezers for 10 to 15 years. How have things changed in the lab world from when you started doing this and how things are now with the technology? 30 years or so ago when I first started in the laboratory field, a lot of the testing was done manually. This, there was a lot of hands-on uh, handling of the specimens by the technologists and the medical laboratory scientists. Since then, we've introduced a high level of automation so that whereas we used to process you know, less than 100 specimens a day, keeping a number of people busy, we can now process 4,000 specimens a day. We can look at, uh, at proteins that monitor cardiac function for patients with heart disease. We can look at thyroid function. We can look at the function of the liver. Uh, you know, so we can analyze the, the role of many organs in maintaining bodily function, as well as diagnose diseases or abnormalities that affect those. And what used to be diagnosed with a slide and a microscope is now done at the click of a mouse. Dr. Dice explains how Cellavision, one of the most advanced systems in the industry, has been a part of that. It identifies and pre-classifies white blood cells. In the past, you took the slide off the microscope, you'll never find that cell again. Here, I can just press a couple of buttons and bring it up with a couple of clicks and be able to look at that cell again, show it to others, use it to, to train my medical lab scientists. And what you're saying is that you don't have to be in the same room as the doctor to look at this and right. give him an answer. And then we can transmit images or view images from literally anywhere anywhere that you have an internet connection. Wow. So how many patients would you say you could view um, through this software? 
in a well, matter of well, hours. It actually it, it accelerates our review because the, techno the medical lab scientists who, who do the technical review can literally scan the screen quickly because they can determine right away if, if a cell doesn't fit into a particular category, then they can literally, with a mouse click, move it to another category and assign it correctly. This is very big for leukemias and you know, cancers that affect the, the bloodstream, but it's also important in viral infections and other types of infections because that's where abnormalities in the white blood cells come out. Asha Singh, coordinator of the Core Lab, has been a medical laboratory scientist for the past 30 years. She has worked at numerous private laboratories and hospitals in the tri-state area and even dealt with regulations. She explains how the Streamlab Vista Analyzer has changed the industry. It reads the barcode labels, sorts, spins, and uncaps tubes, and then sends them to the analyzer for whatever tests were ordered. So it's pretty much all robotic. It's all robotic. We, the, tech, the medical laboratory scientists actually don't have to open the tubes as they come from our nursing units with barcodes on, with caps on. They stay that way. We don't, and it's for pay, uh, safety reasons. There's a lot of test tubes in there. These are each, each one represents a patient? Each one represents a patient, correct. But each patient may have multiple number of tests ordered on, on them. And uh, we have our menu, testing menu for the analyzers is about 90 different analytes we can have tested at one time for uh, chemistry for one patient. Wow. Yes. All right. So on those two analyzers, there are main analyzers. In this area, we probably process about 1,200 samples a day, patients actually, but more and more, lots more testing, you know. So this is um, the chemistry areas where we look for uh, this, the electrolytes uh, in your body. Uh, we look for the liver function, your kidney function, um, cholesterol, thyroid function. This is where all that testing, that type of testing is done. So, and you and, said 1,200 samples a day. Yeah. So that's a lot of lives that Correct. are, the health of those lives are coming through this facility. Correct. Correct. Somebody's pregnant, the doctor's able to tell them you're pregnant, you know, things like that. So those are happy things, I think, you know. So we are, it's a, it's a nice, exciting uh, feel, I think. And the need for employees like Asha Singh and Debbie Shin is growing. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the field is expected to increase by 15 percent in the next seven years. And that number could get even larger once the Affordable Care Act takes effect. What was your undergraduate degree in? Well, at first, believe it or not, I was undecided and I was going for fine arts on the side and then my dad was like, no, Deb, your, your path is really in the science field. And I said, okay, I think this is the choice for me. Debbie Shin decided to pursue the path of medical laboratory science while at Kane University. After going through the hospital's training program, she was hired and is in her sixth year. I mean, you're very young and you're a medical laboratory science. When you were in school, I mean, you hear now nonstop how people can't find a job, but for you, I mean, would you say this process will was a little bit easier because there was a need? Yes, I believe it was a very good opportunity. Um, and you know, there's, there's always something out there. It's just you have to really look. And what happened for me, I mean, it's a blessing. I came here and you know, they had so much opportunity. Like I said before, there's always an opening. There's always advancement. Um, there's new technology out there. And the hospital's continuously growing. So there is an opportunity for someone. Because less and less high school graduates are going into the fields of science and math, the U.S. is projected to face a shortage of more than 200,000 workers in these critical industries by 2018. Baby boomers are growing, and I know you had mentioned to me before the average medical laboratory scientist is about 50. 50, 51, 50, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do have a training program. Um, I think it's a very good program, and I think uh, the students really like it here. We have students coming in with either um, a BS degree from uh, chemistry or biology. They do their clinical rotations here, and um, they're exposed to all the different areas in the laboratory, not just the core lab, but blood bank. Uh, microbiology, immunology at our other sites as well. And 
once they're done and they graduate from the program, they take their certification test. And if we have positions, we do hire them. One drop of blood actually makes a world of difference when you're actually diagnosing these patients. And for us, um, I was able to go and see different laboratories. And for you, what's in it every day when you wake up to go to work? What keeps you going? Why do you love what you do? Because I'm coming here making a difference. Definitely making a difference and you know that every work counts here, especially when it comes to the patients. What has been the excitement for you in being a medical laboratory scientist? I have a wonderful staff. We have fun doing this and um, I come in the morning and not know what to expect. You just have to go, you know, just take it and run. So. Wow, well, you know, technology is certainly changing and I'm sure as time goes on, we will see more of a need for people to work in this field as well as the way things work in this field. And we really want to thank you for taking the time to share with us your insight on this. And um, thanks for joining us. All right, so that does it for WNBC Hometown. Stay with us. We'll have more news after the break.